and welcome to 3Q The Artist, the podcast designed to go beyond the typical artist interview by asking three unique questions in just 15 minutes. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me tonight is singer-songwriter Surreal Hess. Originally from Ashland, Oregon, Surreal moved to Los Angeles, bouncing around from living in a trailer to showering at Ralph's. Eventually, he grew an audience through YouTube by recording Omegle reactions and live streaming covers and originals. Over the last year, he's become a prolific writer and his authentic freestyles posted on TikTok and Instagram have amassed millions of views. To top it off, during an American Idol audition, Katy Perry told him he would one day write the best song in the world. So without further ado, Surreal, thanks so much for being here. How's it going? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thanks so much for having me. That's an awesome intro. How are you doing? <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So before we get started, the people need to know, when Katy Perry said that to you, did your heart just absolutely sink? <laughs> I mean, it did in a couple ways. So that was uh, 2018 when I had moved out to LA and I was auditioning for American Idol. And so um, she gave me this incredible compliment immediately after giving me a no. I still I still got past that round, but it was like a heart sink in the way that she had just kind of crushed my hopes and dreams. And it was Katy Perry <laughs> saying, you need to get your claws out. I, you know, maybe not American Idol. That's maybe not your route. But then at the same time, she gave me this like huge hope of like, yeah, you'll one day probably write the best song in the world. I feel like you're you have that skill that that people maybe don't have. And she also gave me a kiss on the cheek and called me oh. babe. It was just oh, so yeah, that's that, your that life. Sticks with, me. <laughs> sticks with me. Well, I can only imagine what that felt like. So, without further ado, are you ready for question one? Yeah, of course. I've heard many artists say, "I am my music, and my music is me." So, what does that statement mean to you, and why? I think it's. Um, it's really what the statement is like, it's kind of hard to separate um, your feelings, what you're experiencing and going through when you go in to write something that's so emotional and so hopefully authentic, you know, there's the choice of maybe let's just like invent something today and like choose something to write about. And I love doing something like that. But even when I've chosen to maybe try to write about something completely random, like topic oriented, somehow the back of my head, there's some real life stuff from that day like even you know like some conversation I had in the uber or on the way or something somehow is influencing what we're writing about and um, I think what it really means to me mostly is just that like your creative brain knows more about like what your heart wants what you're experiencing than whatever sort of logic side of your brain tries to figure out so it's like you know I could be trying to really hone in on on what I'm feeling but through writing a song, I might like predict a breakup. I might be aware of some things that, you know, I don't really see happening in real life yet. But then all of a sudden I listen to a song I wrote two months ago and I'm like, oh man, I saw this coming somehow. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say like in simple terms, it's just like you're, when you're, when you're creating uh, your brain and that side kind of knows more about you than you even do. So are you telling me that like, if somebody just gave you the most randomest topic, like if I told you to write a song about an orange, would you be able to do it? And something in your brain would be like, oh my God, that one time I was like on the yeah. bus. <laughs> yes. I mean, like I, I, that's one of the things I love to do is freestyle. So people give me a word and then all of a sudden I'm talking about orange and then I'm saying the door hinge swayed a certain way when you left and mm -hmm. like, do you forget and all of a sudden I'm like talking about this person, like it's probably my ex or something, but you just talked about a fruit, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, it happens that way. So I love that. Yeah. All right. Jump in to question two. Every industry has its dirty little secrets, both positive and negative. What's one secret you would like to share about the music industry? Mm, that's a good one. I would say that I think secretly nobody really truly knows what they're doing. And that's something that's been a huge uh, breakthrough for me because I kind of started out as always thinking like there was some sort of like magic wand moment in a lot of, uh, you know, the journey of music, whether it's like a stage like American Idol and all of a sudden you're just like in front of the whole world or you meet the right producer who's made a hit song with, you know, the main people on the radio and oh you're set for life now or the right label deal, whatever. But anytime that I've had more experience with some of the ins and outs of the industry and just like longer I've been doing it 
everyone's kind of asking the same questions. It's maybe from a, a standpoint of more experience or being involved in it longer and knowing a few more people, but it's kind of all starting from the same spot of like, you have to ask what people are listening to right now, what ways are they receiving it and, and kind of always bring it back to like good music. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I, I think very helpful for anyone listening or anyone who's like maybe earlier on in the journey to know that you just kind of have to persist and, and get through experience, get more understanding of how things happen. And then those kind of things just open up because you're more familiar with it versus I don't really think there's any sort of just like absolute genius out there running it that that knows exactly <laughs> there's probably a couple i'll say there's a couple maybe one or two <laughs> yeah they, they, ha they have a couple secrets that maybe we don't all know but uh, but i think uh the overall secret is like yeah you you all of a sudden will be one of the people that just knows how it works if you just stay persistent and and just like try to figure it out along the way hundred percent. And I think you bring up an interesting point, especially with artists that are, were, are kind of maybe just starting out like you were. You didn't start off like immediately having a manager and immediately having fans. And so without, you know, going into your whole life story, <laughs> what was kind of the moment where like, did your manager approach you and you didn't know what to do? Like, how did you kind of handle that? Yeah. I mean, any, any of those like little, um, I guess, like stepping stones where there's always a time where you kind of have to think, like, I don't really know how to handle this. I've never been in this situation. I, I've always just asked for advice from anyone else that maybe has done it before me, or even just someone that's like watched what I've been doing until now. And what's your advice to someone who knows me? And like, what do you think from an outside perspective in terms of, is it the smartest thing to have some random person I've never even really known? All of a sudden, like, be involved in every decision I make forever but it's also just I think that's the same as uh, as making music there's a lot of gut feelings there's a lot of just like you trust your instincts and it's a, still about a connection versus you know what you know this person's going to do to help you um, and it's been like that with with everything that's been a big change in in the career of music like I just I was just talking to a, a younger artist recently who's so talented and, and like I think absolutely on the scale of everything I'm doing if not better and he was over there trying to like say that I'm leagues ahead of what he's doing I'm like dude we never know like we just we just figure it out as we go and I like I think it's just yeah just trusting your instincts and, and asking anybody around you that maybe has any sort of understanding that you don't even if it's just about who you are as a person can remind you uh you know what you're looking for so totally the worst thing that anyone can say to you is no. And even then it can be a positive thing. So, yeah, I think that's a huge, huge point, actually. Yeah, it can, it can totally mm -hmm. change your life in the right way. If someone gives you a no and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, no, I really want that thing, even though you just said no. So I'm going to keep going. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Last question. Today, <laughs> you are 24 years old. Yeah. Now, imagine you're 75 and you're being interviewed for a retrospective on your career and your life what would you hope to be able to say about each? Oh man. Wow. A 75 year old me would probably be so unhinged and weird and, <laughs> and like hopefully would have had enough of like the career successes where I'm just like, I'm just being a wild, weird, crazy person, very goofy at heart. So I would hope on a personal note, I would, uh, I would, you know, have a lot to say of just like living life more freely and, and just, uh, wanting to you know be my weirdest craziest version of myself in front of everybody and that 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 probably does tie into career at the same time um hopefully also if there was some way that my 24 year old self could see this interview i would hope that my 75 year old self would have like fashion tips for the future or some sort of like social like heads up of what i could do that huh. could be cool so i could be like ahead of the game by the time i'm that i'm that age i then i think career-wise i would yeah i mean hopefully i think music is one of those things that um you know good music just exists through any time frame whatever trends shift like a solid beautiful song will live on forever and so hopefully i'm actually making the same type of stuff that i'm making right now and that's at the time of 75 you know, the song I wrote yesterday is still one of my favorites. And I, I would say that my 75 year old self would, would probably 
you know, be satisfied in the fact that we've just been trying to make a good song from the start and we're still singing good songs at 75. I'll have to, I'll have to send you this when you turn 75. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be amazing. Um, this is the kind of outfit I'm wearing. All right. Well, as we close out tonight's episode, Surreal, thank you so much for joining me and taking the time to answer my three questions. And to everyone listening, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. So stay tuned to hear from next week's guest on 3Q The Artist, the podcast that goes beyond the typical artist interview by asking three unique questions in just 15 minutes. See you then.